Let's continue to work with 3D. We're going to be looking at how we can navigate through a 3D space. I have a simple composition that only has two layers, and I'm going to turn both layers into 3D layers by simply using my switch for 3D. If you ever don't see the switch for 3D, you need to make sure that you're toggling your switches and modes so you're in the switches selection. Once you create any 3D element in your scene, you will notice that you have access to some new tools within the toolbar. These pertain to 3D elements. The other thing that's going to be different is that when you select an element in your scene, you will see the 3D gizmo. Any 3D item gets this controller, which will allow you to change position, rotate, and scale. If you click on any of the straight lines with the arrows, that is going to allow you to change the position property. And you can do that for the X, the Y, or the Z axes. So here is my controller for the Z axes. And when I manipulate this, you will see that my element is going to get larger. Or in this case, if I drag into the scene, it's going to disappear. The reason that it's disappearing is because it's now behind the C layer. If we add a new view, and we'll just go ahead and look at the top, you can see how this element is now behind the C. So if I grab my Z controller once again, and we pull back, you can see how now the element is going to reappear. As long as it resides in front of the C layer, we will see it. The 3D gizmo also will allow you to control rotation. If you position your mouse on the outer part and you see the circle, you will be able to rotate the element. And you can do that for any of the axes. You can see when we rotate in Y or in the X direction, the element is going to be spinning on those axes and we can actually have the ability to flip it completely over. I'm going to open up my whale shark a layer and under transform I'm just going to click reset to set everything back to zero. We'll grab the element and we'll drag it to the lower left hand corner as we had before. In addition to being able to rotate and reposition, if you position your mouse on any of these little squares you can scale the element. So right now I am unproportionately scaling the element. If I add my shift key, this will constrain the scaling to be proportionate. In addition to making these changes using the transform gizmo, we can also set any of these settings right here within the layer panel. In many situations, I find it a little bit easier to augment these settings using the layer panel, but you may want to use the transform gizmo on certain elements. We also have these three tools available for 3D scenes. They are the orbit tool, and we have several different options available. We have the pan tool, and we have the dolly tool. Let's go ahead and talk about these. When we use the orbit tool, we are not affecting a specific layer. We are actually temporarily changing the view of our scene. Let me do undo for a second and let's just go ahead and change the Z position of our whale shark so that it is in front of the C scene. Now if I use my orbit tool and I'm going to orbit around the cursor, you can see that as I spin around, we will see that the whale shark is definitely in front of the C element. So this will allow us to actually move in any direction and be able to ensure that the elements are interacting or positioned in the way we would expect them to be. Right now I'm using the orbit around cursor tool. If we use the orbit around scene tool, in this case it's going to work similar but one is going to affect where the cursor is. This one will actually affect the overall scene. If I go back to the orbit around cursor and I position my mouse in the upper right hand corner, you can see how now we're orbiting based on that point. This becomes the point of rotation. If I go back to orbit around scene, it's just going to orbit around the center of the scene. Once you've manipulated some of these changes, if you ever want to get back to the default settings, you will go to view and you'll say reset default camera. This will reset everything back to the default settings. So don't worry about messing this up. You aren't actually manipulating any of the elements or changing anything within your scene at this point. You're simply just changing your view.
The pan tool allows you to move the camera sideways or up and down. You can see that I can move the view up or down. Remember that we're not actually moving any elements. You will see that nothing changes in regards to the position attributes. We're simply moving the view. Then we have the dolly tool. The dolly tool allows you to pull away from your scene or zoom into your scene. This allows you to control the zoom on your camera, if you will. Currently, we're just using the default camera, but a little bit later on when we learn about cameras, we will be using these tools to really augment our camera and we can animate these settings. But right now, we're simply just manipulating how the camera is viewing our scene. And we can do this with any of the views, depending on which view is active. I'm going to go back to view and I'm just going to reset my default camera. When you're manipulating elements, we've talked about the transform gizmo and how you have access to position, scale, and rotation. Sometimes if you're working on a more complex scene, it could be a little overwhelming to have all of these available at one time. If you use these tools right here, you can isolate the transform gizmo to only show the position properties. So now, as you can see, my transform gizmo has changed. It's a little bit easier to see over here, but we only have transform properties available. I'll just hide the C so that we can easily see this. You can see that I can pull my whale shark up or down or manipulate it in the Z space and it will change any of those properties about that particular element, but I'm not able to rotate or scale. This is going to isolate just scaling. So now if I grab any of these squares, you can see that I can scale my element. If we hold down our shift key, we'll constrain everything to be proportionate. And then finally we have our rotation and this again, will just isolate the attributes so that we are only dealing with rotation. I'll go back to the universal tool, which will give me access to all of these. And let's turn our C layer back on. I'm also going to just reset my whale shark to set everything back. And then we'll pull the whale shark out in Z space. And let's bring this quite a bit more forward. So I'm just going to change this number to negative 600. In the top view, you can now clearly see that the whale shark is farther in front of the sea layer, but nothing has really changed in our default camera view. All we've done is just bring this more forward in space. Now that we have the whale shark more forward in space, I want to talk about these three tools right here. These allow us to affect the axis of the element. So right now we're on the local axis mode. This makes all transformations and changes based on the layer. Anytime we make a change to any of these elements, it's going to be affecting this particular layer. And this is going to be easier to see if we go ahead and add a little bit of rotation to our element. I'm just going to grab my whale shark and I'm just going to tilt it out. If you look from the top view, you can see that the whale shark is now angled at an angle and we see kind of a more tilted version. If we switch to our world axis mode and we want to augment the position of the element, nothing seems like it's really changing if I move in X and Y space. But if I grab the Z axis and I move the element, if you look at the top view, you can see that as we would expect, we're moving the element forward or backward in space. But this is based on the world view. If we do the exact same thing back with the local axis, and once again, I'm going to grab my Z position and move this, you can see that I'm grabbing the Z axis, but the Z axis is pointing in a different direction. This is because we've tilted the element. So the Z axis is now on this angle as opposed to just being a flat to our scene. When I manipulate the element using the local axis mode, all of the transformations are going to be based on the layer. If we switch to the world axis mode, now our transform gizmo has changed the orientation. And when we make changes, 
we are actually changing the element in relation to the actual composition. This will hopefully illustrate the difference between these two. If we use the view axis mode, this is going to constrain to your actual view. So it really depends on your view. If I go ahead and switch to our left view, here is my whale shark, here's our C. And if we select the whale shark right here, because I'm viewing this in the left view, I can only move the element in the X space and in the Z space, but I'm not able to move it in the Y space at all based on this view. If I switch to another view, here I am in the default view, now I can move the element in the Y view. There are some subtle nuances to using these tools, but it's important to understand how it will affect the element when we're working in this 3D type of world. Another helpful feature of working in the 3D mode is to turn on the Draft 3D. Draft 3D is a real-time rendering engine and it will reduce lag time and just speeds things up in general. When we have Draft 3D on, we have the ability to turn on the ground plane. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this left view to a custom view. If we are in Draft 3D and we turn on the ground plane, you'll see that we get this grid that is going to give us some information based on where our element exists. So as I move around in 3D space, that ground plane is going to give me a little bit of feedback about how my elements exist in this 3D space. Using the ground plane will be helpful to keep elements in perspective and keep them in proportion. So you may want to temporarily toggle that on. The extended viewer is helpful if you have elements that exist outside of the viewable space. If we look at the top view, you can see here is my C element and here is the whale shark. Since the whale shark exists closer to us in Z space, we see it. But if I pull this even a little bit more off of the screen, we still see it, but we don't see our grid. If we go ahead and click the extender view, it extends that grid out past the composition. Once again, that can sometimes be helpful when you're trying to orientate yourself or just make sure that elements are going to line up. I'll go ahead and just reset my whale shark to the default settings and we'll just pull the whale shark a little bit more towards us in the Z space. In addition to this, I'm going to grab the whale shark and I'm just going to position it in the lower left hand corner. This will get us ready for the next lesson, but I did want to go through the various 3D tools and the ways that you can navigate when you're working in 3D space.